worth it by Mark. Hello, it's Mark, and we're, today we're doing a MacBook Pro 2021 16 inch A2485 model screen replacement. You can hear it turn on, and it's not lighting up. There's a crack down there. You can't really see it in the video here, but I'm going to show you what tools you need. Here we go. First tool you'll want is the Jimmy by iFixit or some metal pry tool, a 4PL screwdriver, a T3 screwdriver, no, also want a T5 screwdriver, you want a T8 screwdriver for the hinges, and you're going to want a P2 screwdriver or star bit. Some bended tweezers are always helpful, and definitely a plastic spudger for your connections and maybe some pliers. Let's get into it. Grab out that 4PL screwdriver and remove the eight screws from the bottom. You can also use a P5 screwdriver if you don't have a 4PL. We got all the screws out, so we'll grab our metal pry tool and start from the bottom here. Just get around under the edge and just lift it up and you'll feel it pop. Uh, there's one on the side, one on the very bottom here, and then you would just grab it and then you would slide it off just like all the other ones. You slide it off, slide it downwards towards the longer side here, just like that. And then boom, got the bottom case off. Now we got to get into disconnecting the battery, so let's get zoomed in here. It's very important to disconnect the battery, get out a plastic spudger, and the battery connection is right here. It's this little ribbon cable. You'll pull down the little piece of tape here, and then you can lift up the little lever over the battery connection. And then you'll be able to slide it out, uh, just pull it straight down, don't yank it up or anything, and um, then we will move forward on getting it fully disconnected. But this is the main power source, and that's what you're going to want to disconnect right away. And any repair, always disconnect the battery. We are not done yet disconnecting the battery. We still will have to disconnect the track pads. It's right over the top of it. So you'll get out a T3 screwdriver and unscrew these two screws just right above the main part of the battery. The um, I believe it, it's what uh, tells the battery it's charging. I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what this thing is for. It's like a T5 screwdriver. It was in um, some of the older MacBooks and all that, like the M1 chip 2020. And uh, you'll just get that removed and then you'll lift up the uh, little sandwiched part here right off the prongs to make sure it's not touching. Time to grab out the T3 screwdriver. We'll remove the antenna connections off the board. We'll remove, remove these two screws um, right here from the bracket and then try to keep it bestly organized as we can so we don't misplace them. And there's also a third one I forgot, but we'll just get on our plastic spudger and just disconnect these here and uh, just kind of lift them right off, right off the gold part. You don't want to bust it off the board. It's happened to me on other devices. All right, got that other T3 screw removed, got that done, and now let's move forward on the rest of the repair. Next, you want to grab out your T5 screwdriver, remove these six screws from the Wi-Fi antenna, and also it's holding down the ribbon cables that connect the screen to the logic board. Next, grab out your T3 screwdriver and remove the four screws from the two brackets on the top that are connecting the camera and the screen to the logic board. We got the brackets off. Let's get our plastic spudger and gently lift off the connections here. They call it the Lego connector. and. Uh, Anyways, we will move forward after that, grab our T5 screwdriver and um, remove the hinge covers here. You won't be able to remove the hinge cover until you remove the Wi-Fi antenna. So make sure you note that when you're putting it back together so you don't put the Wi-Fi antenna all the way in and then realize you can't get it out. 
quickly grab our T3 screwdriver, remove this bracket here, and the connection. I actually do not know what this part does. If you know what it does, please leave me a comment below. I'd like to know. All right. Thank you. It's a beautiful time. You grab out your P2 screwdriver, remove the nine screws from the top here. Luckily, it's only nine screws. It used to be like 20 when you had to do this repair, so um, at least they lessened up on how many screws you had to put in at this for this repair. Um, I'm not sure if they were thinking that I was going to be the one fixing it, but thank you, Apple. Haha, <laughs> for the easy part, the Wi-Fi antenna is so much easier to take out than it used to be. And then we got these hinge covers. I like to push them with the uh, screwdriver, or just kind of flick it out with putt spudger, whatever you got, and just get it out there. And, and we can just move forward with the repair. And thank you for watching this video. I'm trying to leave you a very well detailed guide so then you don't have to rewatch it again. All right, for the worst part, taking off these metal brackets, not really. Putting them back on is the worst part. But you grab it from the top here, and you want to grab it with your thumb and just pull it off. And there's also this little plastic thing you'll take out as well. You'll want to take those off. They'll fall off and then just fall on the floor somewhere, and they're not magnetic, and you can't pick them up with the magnetic screw picker upper, so don't lose these. You want to make sure you have them. Grab out your T8 screwdriver, and you're going to remove the six screws for the hinge, but first unscrew the two on each side and loosen only one of them, and then we will open up the screen and then um, unscrew those final last two screws, or I would say one screw per hinge. Um, that'll make it a lot easier to take the screen off. All right, well, we will get the camera zoomed out here so you can get a good view. But you lift it up just like this, lay it on the table on its side while the screen is opened up like this, and then remove those final last T8 screws from the hinge. And then I'll show you how you slide off the screen. All right, we got the screws removed, so we can just push the screen off just like that away from the top case, and we got the screen removed. Let me quickly uh, prep the screen here. You can see my beautiful face in the reflection. But you want to sometimes use pliers to uh, bend the hinges back because you want to make it in the open state. Perfect. Screen's all prepped. Hinges are pulled back. Now let's pick it up and put it just like how we had it when we screwed it in, unscrewed it. Um, and uh, we will just lay it like this. You want to make sure you don't have any slack in the ribbon cable or get it snagged in between. You won't have enough reach to reach your connection. Um, all right, so here we just lay it down flat. Use gravity to pull it down. You'll hear, hear it kind of click in, and you know where you got it. Then you put it back oh, up on its side, possible. and then grab your T8 screwdriver and screw in just one screw on each side of the hinge and then we'll test the screen After you close the laptop lid, once it's all screwed together, um, and you have the right amount of slack on your cables, you'll want to mount the cable, kind of map the cables through. You like kind of stick them around. You'll have to really mess with it to get it right. It is very difficult. I've spent maybe like 20, 30 minutes sometimes per repair I've done just trying to get these things on sometimes they even get bent and you got to like re-bend them back so then it'll clamp on but you put it kind of you put it over top of it on the back side and then 
push it downward. So watch what I do here and um, I get it on. You want to make sure you don't go through the ribbon cable. You don't want to ruin the ribbon cable like this over $700, $800 screen that you just broke because you just screwed in the screw through the ribbon cable. So this is the most important part to pay attention to detail. All right, I'm just gonna get these connections on here and we'll just move forward on putting it together. I'm actually gonna test it here because I don't wanna waste my time. I uh, do repairs every day, maybe eight to 10 repairs some days. And I uh, had to, uh, so I screw down the, the brackets and I'll have to actually unscrew those screws to put the Wi-Fi antenna in. You know, farther in the repair but I'm just doing this to save myself time because I don't want to have to take it apart and take the part off if it some reason didn't work so we are gonna just show you how to get it tested and then we'll move on with putting it together all right perfect so while I screw this back together um, I screw down the ribbon cables on the top and then I actually put the brackets over the connections. They're actually really touchy, like really just shake it up a bit and they come off, I swear to God. All right, well, we'll just screw them down so they don't come loose while I'm working on it because I don't want to short this board. It would be very expensive. All right, so we're just going to test it without the Wi-Fi antenna and um, make sure that works. So we'll just connect the battery, the trackpad, and the flex cable for the battery, the main connector here. And then you'll want to plug it in. Um, the MacBook won't turn on if you don't plug it in, um, just like all the other MacBooks. So we'll get it uh, flipped over here, give it a good test, and make sure it works. I'm not going to show all the testing here because um, I want this video not to be too long. All right, the screen worked, so we got done testing it out. Uh, we want to now do a full test, so we'll disconnect the battery yet again. And uh, you'll want to remove the T5 screw again. And you want to remember you're going to want to put the T8 screws back in. And then you'll want to put the hinge covers right on top of them right afterwards. Don't forget to do it before you put the Wi-Fi antenna in. Otherwise, you're going to end up having to do a lot more work taking it back out. Anyways, thank you for watching my video, and please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below and let me know if you have any questions. This repair cost about $800, and the part was very expensive. It's an OEM screen that I got from one of my vendors. I know a couple different places where to get them. And um, if you get an aftermarket screen, you'll probably lose True Tone or possibly the Apple logo on the back of your, um, the back of your uh, MacBook. So I'm going to remove these uh, T5 screws, these covers. Don't take them off again because you don't want to have to put them back on. But just remove the screws so you can lay down the Wi-Fi antenna and screw back the T5 screws right back through them. And then it will be mounted, tested out all right before you put it all the way back together. And we'll give it one other final test uh, before we put it back together and put the bottom case on. Make sure the Wi-Fi is working. Sometimes you forget to reconnect things. Anyways, you'll use your P2 screwdriver, screw the screws back in, all nine, and uh, we'll just speed up this repair, and thank you again for watching my video, and just leave me a comment, anything, really, I'm really responsive on uh, answering any questions that you may have, and also I want to make sure that you know that you don't lose any features like some of the other MacBook repairs that you can do now. It's really annoying. It's actually a soldering repair now that, to do some of the newer screens. But all right, so I use some bended tweezers to push on the Wi-Fi antennas here. And you'll, you'll feel it click in. Like, it really, you, you feel it. And, and that's a big thing about the repairs. And remember, it's a T3 screwdriver that you'll use to screw the bracket back on. So let's get it all screwed back together, and then we will give it a test. I'm really happy about this MacBook's design. The design of having the um, charger, a MagSafe, where it uh, disconnects when someone trips on it instead of pulling your whole MacBook off the table. So I'm really happy that uh, they put that in this um, in this computer. And I think that was the best design for a charge port, is a magnetic one. Well, we'll get... Uh, 
to the last stage here, just connecting the battery back on, put the trackpad cover back on. Um, there was, it's a T3 screwdriver and you'll want to connect the main connector and then we'll want to flip it over, plug it in and give it a test. I had a little bit of issues with my charger, so I had to try a couple things, but there we go, worth it!